Hello guys, I hope you are doing well. So welcome back to another video. I am Tony and if you are looking for a cheap power bench supply, you are watching the right video because today I'm gonna do a quick hit build and a review on this power supply board that claims to handle from zero to 30 volts and from 200 milliamps up to 3 amps. So it was really cheap, just around four pounds I pay on and let's see if it's worth or no. Okay guys, so let's go to my working bench and without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's have a closer look at this kit to see what is inside. So in this small bag we have uh, a big capacitor, a 5 watts resistor, potentiometers and some connectors and a trim port over there. Some wires, this one definitely are for the potentiometers if you want to mount it in the nice uh, chassis in order to bring the potentiometer on the front panel. Some small resistors over here. A bag with some ICs and some transistors and a power transistor. Definitely this one is going to be the one that handles the 3 amps and diodes. And the PCB board. Which looks really nice. And it's very easy to build because all the resistors are marked on the PCB, the values capacitor, diodes and everything, it's gonna be very easy and very fast build. This kit I bought a while ago from Aliexpress and cost me only £3.65. Looks like it's a really good kit uh, for those that they are playing with Arduino that regulate from 0 to 30 volts and from 2 milliamps up to 3 amps. You don't need nothing more than that in order to play with Arduino around and do small projects. So, has a bunch of components around and it will gonna looks like that when it's done. And just for £3.65, I think it's really a good deal. I suggest you to start with the small components first, which are the resistors and the small diodes. And uh, let open this bag and put all the small components on the table over here. So those are all our small components, each are the resistors and small diodes. I recommend to bend the pins of the resistor in order to have all of them uh, ready to just put on the PCB and solder them. It will gonna definitely help you more when you start soldering the components on the PCB board. And uh, using also a tool to do a V-stop, like that you're gonna be able to keep the resistor eyes up from the PCB. And once you have everything soldered on the PCB with this V-stop, it will gonna look more nice your uh, PCB. Then another advice that I would really recommend you guys before start soldering the components on the board is to measure the components to be sure that uh, the components are okay and you are putting the right value in the right place on the board. And how you can see in this resistor we have red, red, black and brown. Red mean 2, the next red mean 2, and then you have the multiply factor, which is telling you that it should be 2.2k. And on the multimeter, we have 2.182k. So this means the resistor is good, and make sure that you are putting on the right place on the board, like that you are avoiding when you are trying the board to happen to don't work, because you don't measure the components if are okay before soldering. When we are going to solder, make sure that if there is a diodes that require the polarity direction, make them sure that you are putting on the board in the right place. So if you can see there is a black line that is needs to match the line on the board, then for the resistors, make sure that they are 
matching the right uh, wattage so this one I can see it's very big compared to this one so this one has definitely one watt and this one just 0.25 watt so as we measure and it was 2.2 K the 2.2 K one watts are here doesn't matter the direction how you're putting on this side on this side the resistor doesn't have a polarity these ones are the 10 K which are going to be in this place and let's finish with these diodes so this one are the diodes uh, the 4148 and I have also some Zener diodes here so I put aside the Zener diodes in order that we don't mix them together because they look really similar and we have another one here and here is the place for a 5.1 Zener di diode so this is another place over here once we measure and put the components in the right place we can start solder them then make sure that you get uh, rid of uh, all the excess leads during the soldering process I noticed that in the board it's mentioned a resistor 4.k however in the kit when I measure the resistor which is left so only this one is left it's giving me only 4.6 ohm which is wrong for the board so that's why I recommend always measure the resistors before you are soldering the in the board so I went to my stock and I find one in my stock which is 4.7 K and but I couldn't find any blue color so I'm going to put this one which is 4.6 K so we are almost done with all the components soldered on the board and uh, I want just to mention something before soldering the power transistor over here I suggest you don't solder it straight away because it's better if you solder a connection in order that you don't know mind which kind of chassis you end up and you can mount the power transistor on the heat sink and then just come with the wires on the place where it should be soldered as you can see also I still left with the, some capacitors and with the voltage regulation later over here that come soldered over there and I suggest you solder only if you're gonna might use the fan because this component and all the circuitry is just regulating the 24 volts for the for a 24 volts fan then also how you can see in our kit the ICs are coming without uh, sockets so I run to my stock and I find on my stock three sockets that are gonna go to use for this project so as you can see we finish our board and looks really neat as you can see we can read all the values underneath of the resistors that's why I advise to keep the resistor rise from the PCB board I just mounted the power transistor over here and I use the wires for the potential matters so now it's time to give a try so for this purpose I'm gonna use a volt ampere meter like this one and I was looking on my stock and I couldn't find any 24 volt transformer so I find one that is giving me 19 volts output AC so we're gonna try to do this one even if we're gonna not be able to reach 30 volts but we're gonna try to see how that works okay so let's have a quick test now so I connected my multimeter in parallel with the voltmeter over here to understand if it's measuring correctly the voltage because this one is connected to the output of the board on the input I have the transformer of uh, 19 volts as I say and I have this one is pot for voltage and this one is the pot for limiting the current so I have 8 ohm load to see how is measuring and how is uh, limiting the current so let's increase the voltage so you can see the voltage is not increasing because it's all the way to the minimum the current limiter so let's give to the max and then now we can increase the voltage so we can go quick for the maximum so we have 14.5 with 1.35 amps then let me just put like only one amp over there and then with this one now I should limit the ampere so as you can see the current limiter now it's 0 0.8 0 0.6 0 0.4 and all the way down so it's working perfectly and and uh, for small projects like Arduino where you don't need too much current 3 amps is more than enough and from 0 to 30 volts is perfect so for 4 pounds what I pay on it's definitely gonna help me a lot I just need to find a, a 4 amps 24 volts transformer and I'm gonna be able to find a chassis and do another power supply I really recommend for the beginners that uh, are in this hobby with electronics to buy a really cheap board like this one and use any 24 volt transformer that you have around with at least 3 amps 
I did it like one four amps in order that the transformer will not get warm once you're gonna draw maximum current and definitely you need to use the transistor to a very big heatsink and also if you like with a cooling fan in order to keep it cool because 3 amps for one single transistor it's a bit high current and can get very hot. About the board I can say I'm really happy with it and definitely I'm gonna find a chassis and I'm gonna put inside an enclosure. Thank you guys watch this video I hope you enjoy it I hope you learned something and I hope that definitely you're gonna might buy this board it's really cheap just four pounds with shipping included and uh, please don't forget to subscribe activate the notification bell and guys see you with the next project bye bye